All right. I'm here. Jerry is not. Uh, he'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Evan Trellick, Rob Bradford, uh, join me as we kick off our two with Tom Brady. The Tom Brady interview is brought to you by Northeast Electrical Distributors, DCU, Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Shaw's and Star Market and Northeast Men's Clinic, specializing exclusively in men's sexual health. Uh, Tom, how's it going this morning? Doing well, guys. Good morning. Morning. So I guess you seemed uh, a little frustrated with the, the performance of the offense on uh, Friday. Would that be accurate? Well, uh it wasn't our most productive half, but, um, you know, I think like anything, we watch the tape and there's things that are really good and things that, you know, keep you from scoring points. And offensive football, you've really got to be consistent over the course of the drive. It's, you know, to, to be in long yard situations and then convert is challenging. We did that in the red area. Uh, we had like a second and 20 or something like that, second right. 15. Um, so we're back to work and trying to figure out how to, where all the pieces fit. And then, um, you know, we have giants Thursday and then after that, it's, they all count. So it's, there's a lot of urgency this time of year. There's a lot of, you know, us trying to get things right. And, um, when it's not, you know, it's the only thing we can do is get back to work and try to try to fix it. It seems, you know, obviously with the Decker stuff and with Britt, and not having Edelman, it seems like you're undermanned here heading in, into the season. Do you feel that way or, or, or no? Well, you know, I think there's – you go into camp and I think there's things where you're hopeful of situations working out. And then, you know, the competition has its way of, you know, weeding things out. And we had certainly to start camp, you know, depth. And then we just – certain things haven't worked out the way that – you know, we had hoped and the, you know, certain players would have hoped, but that's football too. You know, I mean, I've been around a while and long enough to see that, um, you know, every year is different and you just don't know how things are going to work out. And, um, whether it's injuries or, you know, certain things that keep people from being at their very best and competing at their highest, I mean, that takes a toll. So, um, we're, we're at where we're at. I mean, I don't think anyone, feel sorry for the New England Patriots. I said that before. So we'll just try to do the best we can do. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's good enough. Obviously there's been some guys, obviously some have been really successful. Some haven't. And I think of guys like even all the way back to Donald Hayes or Ocho Cinco or, or Reggie Wayne, Britt, do you know right away or how long does it take for you to realize, and nobody specifically, but just in general, hey, this isn't going to click. This isn't going to work out. Is it, is it a process? Are you aware of it pretty quickly? Well, I think it's it's. I think anything's over the course of time. We have, I and mean, the guys who are in here at some point obviously have the talent to be able to play and compete in the NFL. A lot of those veterans that you named have a lot of productivity, um, and just this particular situation at that time, you know, for our team, it just didn't work out. Um, and I think there's just a lot of factors that go into you know, being successful as a pro athlete and being successful at a particular position on a team. I mean, I would say receiver is a challenging position in our, in our offense. We, uh, and I, we have a very graduate level type of offense and, um, it takes a lot to learn. It's just not easy. Um, not easy for rookies, not easy for veterans. Um, it's a lot of work. It's time consuming. It's, you know, if we're going to be effective on offense, we've got to have a lot of, you know, people out there that can process information quickly and make adjustments and everything changes week to week. So everything's a big adjustment and, um, you know, guys who handle it uh, and can compete and have the skills do a good job. And that's typically guys who, um, you know, we've had quite a few over the years, but who can, you know, pick it up and understand it. And, you know, Josh is a very, intense coach and um you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so um it's not going to work for everybody i mean that's just the nature of the nfl uh, there's a lot of offenses i could go into that i wouldn't work at very well um but that's just that's the way it is tom speaking along those lines of, of wide receivers i don't know if you saw des bryant going on instagram saying tom brady has always been my favorite player for the first question is is did you see that and the second question have you had any communication with him at all 
Um, I know Des just a little bit. Um, you know, I think he's obviously a hell of a player. Um, but, you know, I don't make those situations for our team, and I don't, you know, go in there and tell him who I want. I mean, that's not the position I've ever played here. You know, you just respect our team for what they're looking for and our personnel people. And, um, you know, my job is to play quarterback, and who's ever here, that's what I have to make it work with. I, oh, one, sorry, Evan, one second. So I saw we saw the reports this weekend that uh, – that Alex was on the team plane, which he wasn't for the second half of last year, I guess, and not on the sideline. Is that is that accurate? Uh, yeah, he was with, he was with me this last week, so it was. Yeah. So what what so what 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 changed in him not being on the team plane last year and this year was that was that just communication back and forth or was that an understanding of other things? What what led to that uh, being able to happen this year? You know, I don't want to. I'm not getting into all that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, when I ran into him at the uh, it, when I ran into him at the Super Bowl last year in Minneapolis, I remember talking to you about it at the time when we when I talked to him there, he had said in his opinion that that all this stuff had been overblown that he and Belichick actually had a pretty good relationship even then. Would you say that was true? I said I don't want to get into it. Okay. Go ahead, Evan. Yeah. I so, mean, everyone knows it's well documented how you know, the work that he and I do together. No, I know. I No, no. Yeah, no, I understand that. I'm just trying to figure out because I saw the reports this weekend that he's traveling with the team. Was he on the sideline on Friday? Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Okay. I guess that's that's it with, with, with Brady. I'm not really sure what what he's upset about. I really didn't get your question in. The, I, don't, I don't get... Like the Guerrero, like not answer this. Obviously, you go back to the Ben Volan thing, uh, where he walked away. The yeah, ben I don't know. But we, but we <clears throat> thought when that happened, I thought it was because the the directness of the question, the linking it. Yeah, with, I don't think that's. I don't Edelman. think this is. I'm not sure what Brady's frustration is today. I got it with with Reamer. I was actually like legitimately curious, and I said to him when I talked to Guerrero in Minneapolis, he said that it was all overblown. Like he said, you know, this this is sort of. Uh, issue going on with he and Belichick and the battling back and forth. I did not expect. I can admit, I got you know, I get why he was pissed off at us in uh, January about Reamer. Totally get, I got that at the time. I explained it to him. I don't really understand this. this. Doesn't like, make sense. I'm not really sure what's going on. No, like, he like, doesn't want to talk about the Guerrero situation from last year. Fine. I just wanted to know was he but, on the but, sideline but, Friday night. But, I, but but like I said, with when Volan asked about the Edelman thing, that's linking Guerrero with the performance enhancing drugs. Okay. I, I sort of understand that where yeah. you can link that up with the Guerrero thing. It's just curious. I mean, that's, I'm just, well, curious. I mean, it has yeah. to be asked. Yeah. I don't really understand what the, what the issue he, is. He knows going into this interview that this is going to be a topic. And if he doesn't know somebody to, but there wasn't even a prepping him, but it wasn't even a, a combative topic. Like not it was all. just, I was just curious. And so the, that was the last question, I guess was the quarterback question of the week. Brought to you by Northeast Men's Clinic, specializing exclusively in men's sexual health. Uh, the Brady interview brought to you, of course, as I said before, I read all the sponsors. I lost them. Oh, well, we'll do. We'll read them again later and we'll replay it. I don't know, Chris. Am I missing something? No, you even couched it by saying that you had spoken with Alex. And yeah, he we had, had a said good that talk. It wasn't a big deal that, right. that others had been m- mischaracterizing the relationship between Brady, uh, Belichick, and Guerrero anyway. You, it seems you like... were pushing a little bit but because he says, I don't want to talk about it, and you followed up. But that's your job. I don't think well, it wasn't really way. a follow up. It was more. Oh, but he, I just said he was. I was going to move on. He was. He was on the sideline Friday, correct? Yeah, or was he? I, I don't I, even know. I didn't think he was. It was a fair follow up. I don't know. He seems. It seems like he's. But you're right. Between the Volan stuff, which I didn't think was a big deal either, and this, he seems particularly. But you know the difference. But you, we can we can tell the difference. If we came away from that Volan thing, okay, we know why he shut down that interview, right? We may not agree with it, but we know why he shut it down because he's linking or someone's saying that is the Guerrero's being linked with PED stuff, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. This one was. It's a question that has to be asked. It's a topic that everyone's talking about. Now, I, has there ever been anything saying don't ask about Guerrero? No, I don't know. Nobody's ever told me that. Right. So if I mean, if this is a legitimate thing, this is a le- this is at the heart of everything. You know, if he wanted to, if he wanted to keep saying this, saying, "Hey, I don't want to talk about it," even after that last question, I would assume that probably that was going to be the last question yeah, I you think asked so. about it. Yeah, because Evan was really wanting to get his. What was going to be your question, Evan? Uh, at this point, it doesn't matter. No, um, I really want to know. Well, one question I would ask him if I had an unlimited amount of time would be about his belief on distractions. He's talked a lot about distractions when he hangs up. On this show right now, in reaction to an Alex Guerrero question, 
He's smart enough and media savvy enough to know the reaction he's going to create from that because we're all going to read into it. Now, why, why, why did this bother him? So is there still tension at the top? I was going to ask about Mark Leibovich and, and the big game and the book that just came out and the characterizations in there. And Leibovich says, I learned that the Patriots shaky alignment at the top, Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady could come apart. And Brady gave his blessing to this book. He he, really he talked to him, right? Talked to yeah. Leibovich. And that's what I was going to ask him about: is how much did he know about? The only thing I'd say to Brady is if I get the chance to talk to him again, which I guess I, I guess I will. I don't know. I would say like this is kind of part of the deal. Like you have a business partnership with this guy. You put them all over your documentary. You produce a documentary together. Like this is life. This is how it goes. You have to answer a couple of semi tough questions but, about that. And by the way, we fought back and forth about Gurr for forty five minutes two years ago. Well that's that's we just talked for that's ninety what, seconds. That's what's and bizarre about it. Because, ninety seconds. I'm just trying to get clarification. I'm 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 surprised. That's all. Like I said, the Reamer thing, I totally get from Brady's end. I have no problem with it. I defended them for it. I would have hung I probably would have hung up too. I would have been pissed. This one is mystifying to me. I, well, I, I don't get it. Well, Evan, like Evan said, Brady's a smart guy. He's a he's a media savvy guy, and so when he does this for two, the two times that Guerrero has been brought up since he started talking the preseason, right? The Volan thing and this, I don't think it's been brought up in any other media uh, get together, right? So he's done this twice. Nobody's asking him about Guerrero from here on in because they don't want to be shut down by him. I guess. I get. I mean, if you're doing your job, you're asking about. Guerrero. No, I know. I well, guess, but I don't even think. But again, I don't even think it's. You know, I, I'm not sure what the. You know, I, I, to me, Brady can't say he can, but he really can't say I'm not going to talk about Guerrero. That's that's not that's not. He's made a business business partnership with this guy. He's made his living like his post career is with this guy. He travels with the Patriots. He takes care of half the team. You can't say he's off topic again, off off uh, off limits. You can, but not like realistically. You Isn't can. this a distraction? The, this, the, the whole thing about no I don't know. distraction. I, I, Did I he not just create one? I guess I don't. I'm, I, I got to admit, like I said, I wasn't. I was not surprised at all once I figured out it back in was it the end of January? I guess it would. Yes, been. that didn't surprise me at all. Like I get that. This one is confusing to me. Well, it, does, it, it also what, what surprises me, and I'm going to catch all kinds of crap for it, which is just <laughs> what I need on a freaking Monday. <laughs> Jesus, Let's, get me out! Let of here. Evan crap not be here for you. Crap from who? Uh, our people here. They're going to get all pissed at me for this. If if Brady says to to the people here, whoever deals with these things, look, I'm, I'm happy to come back next week, but I am not going to take a Guerrero question. What do you do? We don't ask but Guerrero why, questions. But, but yeah, but why? Before, but, I mean, we said, but we but we make that very clear but, to the audience that that's the case. You know, that this is contingent. But doesn't on, that, doesn't yeah, that, doesn't I mean, that, that surprise yeah. you though? Shock. I, I no, no, but that could happen. But doesn't surprise you that that hadn't been? If that's the case, then that hadn't been broached before this. Like leading up to this, who's we? Oh yeah, but I, but I don't think I don't know what you know. Yeah, I don't know what I, I don't know what Brady expected. And I'm also, sorry. you guys have such a. You, I mean, you've been interviewing him for a, how many years now? You have a Six good relationship. Yeah. You had the back and forth with the Guerrero stuff before. I, I just don't the 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 Reamer thing when he hangs up. I think to your point, I think we understood it totally justified. But this surprises me just because I actually get you along guys pretty have well. A good relationship I actually get along pretty well with Guerrero. Right. I mean, I've, I've well, issues. We try to spin that. I have some issues. I have some issues. But we, but we text back and like I, you know, I, I talk to him. I don't have a big issue. I have no issue with him. Obviously, some of the things he's done in the past, but we got along fine now. I'm surprised. I get him, and I'm surprised. What do you guys think? Let me hear from you guys. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seventy with Brady or with Kirk Menahan on this one. It's gonna be a tough call. I wonder what the what the audience is gonna say. <laughs> it six worked one, out well. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven in headlines with Chris Curtis as well. We'll take the calls on Brady and all that stuff hanging up on us. I'm sure we'll replay it. You're gonna hear it how many times across the country today? Hundred. Yeah, hundred. <laughs> 10,000 times. So This is not good for playing, uh, killing the last half hour he's, with Brady. He's, and he's trying to control the media is what he's trying to Which do. Which is, again, I don't have a problem with that, but, you know, it doesn't. But as long as as long as long people are, uh, can see through it a little well, bit. Well, I, I think everyone's going to take Brady's side because he's Tom Brady. I get that. But, again, you can't make Guerrero your business partner, put him in all over your documentary, and then say, you know what, I can't, I'm, I won't talk about him. I mean, like I said, you can, but it's not a realistic ask. He's trading access for uh, contr- editorial control. I know mean, you keep basically saying what I'm saying, but in a different way. <laughs> we can do this for the rest of the show if you like. All right, 617-779-7937 as I take 46 calls from management, I'm sure, during the break. Let's load them up, all right? Just let me have it in Headlines with Chris Curtis, which is next. It's time once again for Headlines. I said I don't want to get into it. Okay. Go ahead, Evan. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows it's well documented how... You know the work that he and I do together. No, I know. So, I no, no. Yeah, no. I understand that. I'm just trying to figure out because I saw the reports this weekend that he's traveling with the team. Was he on the sideline on Friday? Yeah. 
All right, guys. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. It's time for Kirk and Callahan's Headlines. You know what? You know what we missed there. When you What's asked up? if he was on the sidelines, he said yes. I'm not sure he was really. Concerned I know about that, but whatever. It's true. <laughs> you know what? You actually were smart to follow up there because he he started. Evan, Evan, to Evan, I don't, I'm good. I don't need it from you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm, I'm coughing the mic. Can abilities. you give an example of what something you did, Evan, in in respect of this? I mean, your interview, your your questions for Brady were almost too tough. I was trying to ask a question. I know I interrupted you. I, I apologize. Trying. Twice, in fact. You, oh, I deferred to times? the king. Forgive me, my almighty Kirk. Forgive me. I like the Des Bryant question. It was fine. That was your typical WEA.com headline grabbing well, question. It gotcha. <laughs> was fine. It's legit. I mean, no, it, yeah, it clearly he, he's yeah, talked to Totally him. legit. He called him and asked him if he's going to play for the team. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, on, we all Des. thought that was going to happen. Let's go. How are you doing, Kenny? You okay? Uh, stomach's a little churning. But really? <laughs> I don't think we're in the wrong. I just it's unfortunate. It's yeah, unfortunate. It's, the timing could could have been better, I guess. Yes. But what, what, what do you get? He's he'll be on next week. He's he's pissed about. I the Guerrero thing's a trigger for some reason. I mean, I understand it, but I don't know. I haven't looked at social media. I'm sure I'm getting bludgeoned. But what are you going to do? What are you talking? No. What are you, how can you how can you listen to that? Because and say, because say, because say, because people because it's Tom yeah, Brady. That's right, how it works. I, I know. It's and, me. And I reference that all the time. That yeah. Guerrero and we've talked about that. That Guerrero. Yeah, but that. But I could see why people would say, "Boy, Minahan was crazy on that one." This was. Wait, I no, thought, no. What, what? When you start talking about nutrition with him? Yeah, but there was a but there was a combative back and forth. No, this it was wasn't. This, it was just a this, conversation. This was this was benign. I thought. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even think. I swear to you, I didn't think it was going to lead to I, I'm, that. I'm telling you, like, yeah, you'll get that that <clears throat> faction of the Brady supporters, but anyone with a brain in their head will say, "Well, what's wrong?" That's why with the that? Patriots are more likable than the Red Sox. They were they their their players are defended. They, there you go. See, they, that's that that is an old school Red Sox way of doing things. <laughs> there you go. That's true. Headlines brought to you by Dr. Robert Leonard, Dr. Matthew Presti, the hair doctors of Dave Portnoy. One eight hundred get hair. We see the calls. We'll get to you guys in a second. Dave in the car, Brian in Bellingham, Tom in Portland, Ken in the car, Mary in Rentham. You guys all hang on, okay? Here's Chris Curtis, who's hosting headlines. Chris, good morning. Good morning, guys. Good, good morning. morning, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Ken, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Play some Morgan music. Martin. Thank you. I'm rattled. I'm sorry. Relax. It's not a big deal. Life goes on. What? You okay, Chris? Jerry. Hey, Jerry, whatever your name is. <clears throat> Rob, oh, sorry. I'm not sure who's who's... Is it Rob is too far over that way today? Yeah, I don't know what's going you want on. Me to move? Reamer I can, and I, Bradford I both sit directly in my line of, line of sight of you. <clears throat> okay. Can I move over this? You're right? perfect. No, you're, you're, good. you're great. Right like, well, I mean, defensive stance. I good mean, morning. Like, good morning. Are you okay? Uh, morning. I'm a, I'm a little rattled. Are you or no? Uh, well, I you know, I just had a, such a nice talk with Tom. I said, hello. He said, hi, Chris. And I said, have a great day. And he <clears> said, thanks. And, you know, I don't want it to be my last time talking with him. I don't think it will be. I don't think it will be. Go ahead. Well... One guy that Donald Trump won't be speaking to is John McCain, sadly. That's, McCain passed away. You're right away. about that. He won't. It's a good point. And Excellent the, transition, as and always. The, and the President of the United <laughs> States declined to issue a statement after his, the passing of the I Senator. Can I say this? Let me say this. I'm not defending Trump. Because I actually think maybe Trump's worst moment is, we, do we have that cut, Ken, from the debate where he said he likes his... Uh, He's a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. That's not his best moment right there. Maybe his worst moment. Yes. But so McCain and Trump hated each other, right? Hated each other. Despised. So now you want Trump to pretend he liked McCain? Just he hates the guy. McCain hated him. He's not going to the funeral, right? No. So he's not going to be the funeral. He's not going to speak at the funeral. They hate each other. They just happen to hate each other. You want Trump to pretend he likes McCain now? He's the leader of the country. You set a precedent of mutual respect for but people. But they don't like respect. each other. So they don't respect right. each other even. Yeah, they do respect. So Megan McCain making a list? I don't think making, so. making the Kirkman Good. hand list? Uh, so they don't like each other. Like, what do you want Trump to do? Pretend? Trump put on That's his, insulting. Trump put on his Instagram a, my deepest sympathies go out. To right, the I saw that, yeah. With a picture of him. A, it's a, a picture of Donald Trump. Just by himself? Yes. Well, that's interesting. It's not a picture of John McCain. It's only what he had available on his phone. <laughs> yeah, it's like... There are certain things move. you do as president that are just sort of... Okay, but say he does that, then what? Then people do what when he does oh, that? Oh, they'll criticize they'll no matter say what he does. They'll say he's not being totally disingenuous, right? Correct. Okay, then what do you want? So wear that. Be, yeah, the but... ba- be the bigger, better man. Set a good example for well, people. You think if he did that, he'd be a bigger man than John McCain? Uh, no, be the bigger, better man than those people on Can I Twitter. That's the, the most remarkable. I think the most remarkable part of when you read the McCain obituary is at the end when it says McCain is survived by his mother. Oh, his really? One hundred and six year old mother, Roberta, is still alive. Did you see the uh, what is it, HBO doc? <laughs> yeah, it was on? excellent. Yeah, yes. 
Doesn't George really W. Sure. Bush and Barack Obama will be speaking. You know, thoughts on that, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get your thoughts on it. <clears throat> the incredible thing about McCain is I know the hardcore, the Jerry Callahan wing of the Republican Party didn't like McCain because he sold them out. I totally get that. I really I understand where they're coming from. The independent thinking so terrible. No, no, no. But I, but I mean, I would say that it became more important to McCain as he got older to be liked by the New York Times and by that part of Maybe the world. Maybe he was just following what he felt was right and not following party lines. How but about I think, that? That may, that may also be true, but I'm just saying. I, but I can understand if you're a part of the right, I mean, the part of the party doesn't agree with him philosophically. I get that. You don't have to agree with him just because he's a war hero. But when you look at his life, when you really look at the man's life as a sum, as a whole, he was in basically was in a hole for five and a half years. They broke his arms so many times to the point where he couldn't comb his own hair. Could have been released. Could have been and, released and chose not to more be. than once yeah. because his dad was an admiral and he wouldn't do it. And this guy who was in there in that hole became, you know, I don't know. But whatever, 200, 100 electoral votes away from me, President of the United States. It's one of the great lives in American history. It's an Stupid unbelievable, unbelievable story. And yet you think Trump was in the right? No, 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 no. I don't think he's in the right, but I'm saying it's it's sort of like when they want people to apologize on the radio when they're not really sorry. They apologize. Everybody buries them for the apology. Like, you can't really win when you're Trump in this situation. You can issue it, but everyone knows it's crap, right? Yes. Like, if Trump issued a statement saying how much you like McCain – and respect to McCain, you wouldn't believe it when you read it. You can respect someone. Yeah, but I mean, you, but you, you, could, I you could say Ron. you respect. You respect. Sure, but if you read that, all you would think about is him saying that he likes. Yeah, who cares? He, He's still going to say it. If you're the president. If, I guess. This is a right and wrong, and that's it. I guess. It's, yeah, sure, but I'm saying. Simple. There's okay. some, there's some things you're going to do. Let's move on. Well, the Pope Francis. Sure, you bet. Sure. sure. Pope Francis should know right from wrong. This guy is such a, <laughs> this guy is such a vomit. What a vomit he is. What a vomit. What a vomit the Catholic Church leadership is. And I feel bad for people who really care. You know, I think of like my wife, I think of friends of mine, I think of family members who go to, the, go to church every day or once a week, and they really care. And they're doing this again. The Philadelphia stuff is worse than Boston. And now I have no doubt that this, uh, the, the, who, who's the guy that's going rogue? What's his name? Carlo Maria Vignano. Is, I have no doubt he's right. Yes. No question. Given the history of the Catholic Church, no question the Pope knew about this and buried it, which is incredible if they did this again. It's incredible the arrogance of these guys who live in this pretend world, treated like gods. People actually think he's closer to God than like a regular, like a good, I would say my buddy Andy Nolan. He goes to church every single day. I went to high school with Andy. He goes every single morning. He's a great guy. He's a good Catholic. Why is the Pope considered like closer to God than him? Why? You're asking the Jew. So, why? Know. Does he wear jeans like Ken's friend? No, he does not. But why? <laughs> why? I don't get that. Why? I, I'm not the Catholic thing. I don't get it. Okay. The Thanks, biggest guys. fraud, I mean, what do, what do you, what do the biggest fraud in the history of America, of the world is Pope Francis with these tweets oh. about loving each other and how we need to treat each other. If he turns out, if he turns out, he knew anything at all. But then, but then, what happens? They just move him like they did with Bernie Law, right? Well, yeah, he'll live where he'll the live uh, Ratzenberg palace. lived. Right. The, the other former pope. Yeah, they'll fly him out in this helicopter and he'll live in the palace by the water of servants, literally washing his feet. How much does the pope make? Evan, look right. it up. I didn't make any money, right? But no, he, but his, but his whole life is paid for. He's treated like a god. You got to make some money. So this archbishop I don't know. allegedly told um, Pope Francis this story in 2013 me off so much. Oh. about the um, the most recent um, sexual assaults on children by kids the being raped, and he knew about it and said, "Ah, let's move him around somewhere else. Let's bury it. Let's is this, bury the story." Is the story getting reaction though? Yes. Yeah, so it's the biggest story in the country right now. Is it? I know you're into the Red Sox and evolving, I, I am, but it's a bigger yeah. story. Yeah, I, the, the cutter. Yes. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't quite feel like oh, he it has stinks, the traction. Huh? It's not so good. Oh, he stinks. Eric Bedard, I've already said it. And yes. we'll end with another high, uh, high level departure likely coming. Jamel Hill is amicably Ooh, parting ways from ready ESPN yet. September first. When has she been? What has she been doing the last like? When was that show canceled? Ooh, I will check. A what while, is, what was your tweet about weed smoking? Uh, she blocked me. I don't even know. Oh, well, I'll look it up. <laughs> she uh, she tweeted about uh, smoking weed last night. Oh, that's, she's what a maverick. She says, uh, it was a New York Post article. Smoking weed ages your brain by almost three years. I saw that story. She yeah. says, so I'm 120. So now that she's out of ESPN, she can, she can do this? <laughs> so March 8th was their last show. So they've been off the air for six months almost? Right. Jeez. So, so she did nothing. She's what doing, has she been doing? I don't know, but hey, she's well, on Levitard this week. I so, saw that. So make sure you tune into that. I saw that. And uh, then she's done. So the uh, the skipper days at ESPN are being slowly. Um, I know. this Jimmy Pataro. Is that his name? Yes. He is just getting rid of these people right and left. Right. What's he doing, though? Sports Center is back. Question. The opinion, these sort of get up type SC six shows are done, and they're doing uh, much more Sports Center highlight shows. Than well, that's doing progressive, huh? Yes, that's yeah, it's good I like... though. I want that. I want someone I could, something I can turn on in the morning and just see what the hell happened to the game last night. I... Yeah, I think there's a spot for that still. That's true. I, I, I like. And, but by the way, you wouldn't say that if those shows were good though. If Get Up was like a good, funny show, like PTI was at the start, 
and they incorporated highlights, you'd say, this is great. I, I like watching this. It's because the show stinks. Well, you can't, the segments, the, well, no, how long is the segment on that Boston Sports Tonight? What, what, oh, that uh, show's terrible. No, too, how uh, long, how long, uh, when 15, you say we're going to talk about these five minutes, things, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, like, so you, around the, uh, not around the horn, PTI, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, that's like 30 seconds. That's how it should be done. Okay, Rob, you come over and program NBC Sports happy Boston. To. I'll run your website be, and we can no, switch no, places, wait, all right? You think, you think the Boston Sports Tonight Late Show is, is a good excellent. show? You do. Okay. That's anything else, Chris? That's headlines. That's headlines brought to you by Dr. Robert Leonard, Dr. Matthew Presti, the hair loss leaders in New England. 1 800 get hair. We'll get to all your calls on the Brady stuff, which I'm sure is now all over Twitter, right? All over the internet. It's everywhere. Excellent. Before you already have it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Does he really? Well, did, did, thank you. His managing mind. editor live tweeted it. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Is okay. it all the buzz about the Des Bryant question? Yes, yeah, so it was yeah. a great job by Brady. Trellick's question, I think, is going to the yes. entire country. Yes. Debating the, 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 the lost re- that against the, me. The lost Trellick question. I was waiting I don't like, my I don't think you would like that question either. About the about the book? Yeah. Probably not the way he was I don't going. have to ask him anymore. Finally, don't you forward. would have shut down the interview. Jeez. Number one, because it's Evan Trellick. And number two, because I don't need that. Guerrero really is the, need really that. the only thing that shuts down interviews. When you call him Tom, do you think he's going to call you Rob in response? Uh, Tommy. You should have okay. called Tommy. Uh, <laughs> Who else Bradford? should be asking that question, too? Do you really have to say but his that's name? that's the thing. It's, okay, uh, I guess. That's that's you, you don't do that? Uh, I, think really. you, I think you do do that. Do I? Yeah, maybe. That's a, that's a classic interview crutch, though. Oh, well, yeah. Why are you saying... You I'm know. easing into this. Right, yes. You Just me and you talking. You two have quite a rapport, <laughs> we though. Oh, my goodness. Tom. Tom. <laughs> talking about the Montreal Expos? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> All right, we'll be Tom. right back. Tom, speaking along those lines of, of wide receivers, I don't know if you saw Des Bryant going on Instagram saying Tom Brady has always been my favorite player. First, the first question is, is did you see that? And the second question, have you had any communication with him at all? Oh, what a question. That's not, bad. That's not a bad question. I'm not gonna, I will defend you on that one. That's a fair question. Well, he clearly has talked to him. <clears throat> oh, I think that's sort of what frustrated him. He got upset right there. Said, "This guy's blown my sorry, cover." Sorry, sorry. Was immediately sorry, sensitive. Sorry. New Drellick was looming. Oh, a journalist, a giant, fresh off the Raul Martinez spot last night. Brady <laughs> definitely watched. I know Stacy James sat him down for a good, good half hour and explained. Oh, I know Stacy James is awake. I can confirm that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, can, yeah, I think all the pay. I had, you know, Robert Kraft left me this left me this nice long message a couple weeks ago. We had a good, yeah, it's all gone now. What did Kraft like, have to say? Just some of the stuff I was going through. He left me a very nice message. He seems like a very nice guy, which was very nice of him. He didn't need to do that. But how does how are the Patriots upset with this? If they didn't, oh, you, come on, Rob. It's, it's, it's a, a PR little, person's okay, job I mean, to be upset. I mean, no, I know, but the I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, nobody's nobody's upset. About you don't think that. Kevin Gregg would be upset if a Red Sox player hung up on you? Kevin Gregg, whether or not he if, actually if, feel, and you say it's a legitimate question, I know one thing. Matter. I know one PR guy, guy has to defend the play. I know one guy I'm asking tough questions to next spring training. That's JD Martinez. I don't know. Shot up. He likes his guns, evidently. Jeez, what's that Instagram post? I saw something on t- circulate on Twitter. I don't know. We were all into it during the break. The red lights on. What, what happened? Yeah, what's going on? I, I don't I, actually know what it is. I Evan know. just okay. sent it to me. I have it in front of me. Okay. So what it's, is it? It's it's got a picture of Hitler. That's and, never good. That's never a good start. Nah, and it says that's to, not how you want to get which Hitler? Adolf. Uh, yes. Okay. Adolf. Right. Uh, it says to conquer a nation, first disarm its citizens. Adolf Hitler, nineteen thirty three, on Instagram. Okay. And it had, uh, it's from January of 2013. But, but, but then you say the message he had after. And then he says, this is why, message. this is why I will always stay strapped. Hashtag the truth. He's pro-gun. He's, oh, he's, he's anti, no, 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 he's uh, anti-Nazi. That's how I look at it. Yeah, it's just, I guess, I guess it's weird. I thought, I thought it was pro-gun, like, anti-Nazi. It's from five years ago. I thought it was today. Well, that's a, no. no oh, no. okay. So what? I'm so sick of these. Okay. So we uh, tweeted that five so years that ago. So what? I mean, right. Exactly. Kirk praised me on a broadcast. That was 2011. Know, you, never, you, you love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of ironical, the tweet. It wasn't really. <laughs> yeah, dig- no, no, people people are digging through everything these days. It's bad. I know, people look at people's houses and real estate and <laughs> some real psychos out there. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, anybody have my back now? Okay, we've got a line open too. 617 779 7937. You want to react to the Brady interview, which we're going to replay when, Chris? Uh, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay. Hey, Tom, you're up in Portland. What's going on? I think you probably know that. What's going on? How you doing? Kirk, you were doing great on the interview, but you got a little excited and you pushed Brady off the cliff. That's where we need Callahan to be there for these things. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this is what I'm going to hear. So, I, I yeah, okay. So, I, I appreciate that. I'm uh, I'm taking your feedback. I'm ingesting it, thinking about no, but, it. But I would well, say, I, I, oh, 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 yeah, go, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You, go ahead. you had a beautiful interview. We were getting insight to oh, the incredible Belichick insight. way. We were listening on all the reasons of why Des Bryant 
can't come to the Patriots. And you know Brady's sitting at the table with his wife saying, we need Dez. I need someone to throw the damn ball to. Well, Rob's theory is, Tom, I, I don't know if you said this on the air during the break, he seems frustrated. Oh, he does he seem is. frustrated. He seems frustrated. Yeah, I mean, you, you listen you, and talk. Just push him to the yes. cliff. You listen to that answer he had about the receivers. It wasn't, it wasn't exactly like, yeah, no, we'll be fine. It yeah, didn't, well, I think it, it didn't was, really seem that. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, well, think about it. I mean, how would you feel if you were him right now? And by the no, way, no Edelman, right? He's gone for the first four games. Decker did not work out. He was saying he retired, whatever. Clearly, if it was working out, he'd be here. Evan and I are Britt, always... Britt, sorry, Britt failed out. So what do you, he has nothing. I would say this is his worst oh, Cordell receiving core. His worst three. receiving core maybe he's ever had. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. In a year, by the way, in which he has to sing for a supper contractually. Yes. You're talking about $5 million on the table, which... No quarterback in a league has to play Philip for it. Dorsett. He has to play for it. And as he said, sorry, last time I interrupted. I apologize. So, Don't leave. Is, you know, is is they are setting up there. I can see why he's thinking they're setting him up to fail. Right? No, you get no wide receivers, but you get to keep your uh, your trainer and your business partner on the plane. That was Philip the Dorsett is, was a guy who was like an extra guy on the, on the cusp of getting cut last year. And he's their number two receiver heading into the year. Yeah. And I want to come back to what Tom said about Jerry's role. Evan and I are always striving to get better. So about what, what stri- uh, Jerry's role. So what should we have done? What should we have done? I'm being sincere. What should Where? we have? There? Should, Nothing. We, have, should Nothing. we have jumped was, in? No. There, like, no, was, no, Kirk, don't ask one more question. I, I, I would say you could feel it. Remember when we did the uh, Reamer interview? Well, you, you were there that day, right, Chris? Yeah. You could feel in the air that he was pissed off from the start. We kind of asked a joke, jokey question Ken from the start. Ken asked a question. Yeah, Ken asked that you didn't want any part of it. Did you get that sense that that was going to happen at all today? I had a completely Did you positive Ken? conversation. I don't even know. Well, he was very, like the caller said, he was very forthcoming, actually. He was kind of insightful. Yeah, I don't know. Huh? The, la- the question that pushed him, he said no, and then he started to offer Then he started to answer. More. Right, he, he answered the question. Exactly. Put it this way, if he just said no, if you listen to it, I'm going to defend myself here. If he had just said no in dead silence, and we just move on. Like, that's it. But he started talking about Carrera, so he, I thought, he okay. He wanted to talk about it. It yes. made it seem like he wanted to go You're blaming Brady for this. Yeah. Okay, good. That's all I need. And I know you're totally neutral on this. You like Brady. You're, you're a big exactly. Brady fan. Exactly. Huge, huge Patriot supporter, and, and uh, you've never been since, critical of me ever. Since he didn't let's, call me by my first let's name. Let's get to the real important Kirk. issue here before we get to Brady. Paul and Framingham did some in, in, interesting investigative work himself. <laughs> Paul, how are you? I did. I, I looked up the value of the motel that Evan's dad was in. His dad is in a motel, is that right? Uh, tell me no? it's luxurious. Right. I'm in a motel. It's, okay. Yeah, it's called Drifter's Notch. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, on, it's on Pine Street in Hyannis. <laughs> what, what, uh, what does it cost an hour? So so listen, first of all, it's 14 rooms, okay? <laughs> five, ba- five bathrooms. Yeah. Oh, wow. That sounds like a big place. It, it's nice, and if you well, it's fourteen individual motel rooms, but oh. they have five bathrooms. Oh, sure, yeah, right. I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you pay a month in advance, you get a, a an egg McMuffin once a month. <laughs> they bring you some McDonald's food, and uh, you actually pay by the hour. Technically, it's one of those places. Does it have a color nice. TV? No, 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 no. Come on, Evan. He doesn't even have ACs. Does your dad like putting the quarters in the bed? Ah, uh, no? you stole mine. Come <laughs> I, on, I knew, I knew it was coming. Come on, I knew, I knew, I knew it was coming. <laughs> well, <laughs> do you think? I mean, your dad must have – he's been in the motel for like six months now. I think more than that. That's a lot of money. I don't care if it's a motel in the Cape in the summer. You know, Kirk, I don't know. Can You dad- want to call him up? No, not really. Yeah, <laughs> not enough It's to talk more depressing than anything else. Your dad can stay at my house if he likes. What? That's a weird thing to say. I'm trying to help your family bring you together. All right, go ahead, Brian. Let, let me have it. All right, so listen. It's a privilege that you have Tom Brady on your show. Correct? Agreed. I agree a thousand percent. Okay, you couldn't tell that he was a little, you know, you guys are just saying how he's frustrated. No, Brian, hold on, Brian. Let me just, uh, I'll give you all the time you want. But Drellick actually stole what I was thinking was, so we asked him the first Guerrero question. I have to admit I was surprised the the, the the swiftness in which he shut it down. And then we were sort of in that dead silent mode that we've been in a couple of times the last couple of years. And so I thought, okay, sure. he's, Brian, shut up for a second. And I said, okay, he's not going to talk about it. We're moving on. Then he started talking about it. Okay. And Go ahead. then you had some silence. All I'm saying is it's a privilege. He's the greatest quarterback. I mean, you know, listen. And okay, I am. Right. I'm a I mean, big fan. Okay. But what I'm saying is you sounded like you're like one of them little kids that's entitled. You know, you kept on asking the question. No, it's, I, okay. That's your class. opinion. That's, that's your opinion. I, I don't agree. I, I, I don't think it was one of those things where I, I really don't. I thought we were having a conversation. These Patriots fanboys are going to drive oh, me that's okay. through the I roof. I get it. All right. We got lines open. 617 779 7937. Brady hung up on me today. Are you on my side or Tom Brady? If you're a Kirk and Callahan listener, a P1, a Minna fan, you've been with me through it all, you're going to take Tom Brady's side, who's won five Super Bowls, or me, 
who has won what? How many Peabody's have I won? Oh, my Seven. God. Seven. How many times have I been the – glo- How many Globies? Yeah. I mean, how many podcast four time conventions Globies? have yes. you spoken about? Yes. I'm, I was asked to go back this year again. I'm not going to do it. Oh, really? How many uh, – what's the freaking thing they give other Dundies. Year? No, what's the dumb thing the radio people drive? Oh, Marconi's. Of? Marconi's. I'm but speaking six, at the Talkers Convention in yeah, New York City. I'm speaking there next year. I'm looking forward to it. A couple lines open. 617-779-7937. Dave is in a car. Hello, Dave. Uh, how is Brady not prepared to get these questions? It blows my mind. Like, how is he not ready knowing something about Guerrero is coming and, and have, like, uh, an answer ready? Instead, he just gets frustrated like it came out of the blue. And well, I, I guess, as I said I, before, I Dave, I, I think the deal is, I think this is just the deal. If Brady doesn't like it, he can hang up on everybody and walk off in press conferences all he wants. Of course, that's his prerogative. But when you write a book with Guerrero, and Guerrero is your – you're you're sort of you're the guy you're gonna do the rest of your career with. You've tied in with him. You put him all over that documentary of yours. The deal is you're gonna be asked questions about Guerrero. It's news. I know he doesn't like it, but it's news. And you know who has brought Guerrero to the forefront? Tom Brady. This is this is how it works. This yeah. is you know what it is. Honestly, it's Trump esque because what Brady is doing is oh, painting the media in a what certain light. What are you talking light. about? Oh, shut up for a second. If you were smart why, enough, why, you'd why, get why? it. Okay. <laughs> He's, you know, he's a very popular figure, all right? By hanging up, sh- by hanging be. up, as he should be. His hang up on Kirk and this show is inherently a criticism of the media right. and the media. job the media does. You have a president who is who's whose only existence these days seems to be to criticize the media. So Brady is exerting whatever force he can to control the media. But Trump's That's thing isn't hanging up on people or stopping conversations. Rob, 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 I picture. understand what Big you're saying. Picture, Rob. I understand. <laughs> okay, whatever. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I was, I was actually, it was on our show, and I was, it led to a nervy week. But I was with Brady 100 percent on the Reamer stuff. Had no problem with it. No problem on this one. I, I, maybe it's because it's me. I don't know. To go, to go back to what the previous caller said, like he had to know these questions were coming. He already went through this once with the Reamer thing. You know, there was some confusion about. There was definitely confusion, right? There was. There's, there's no confusion here. You go into this week, especially with the report that you're referencing. He had to have known those were out there with the Guerrero on the team playing. You knew the Guerrero questions were coming. Let's get. Let's get a thoughtful, so there's, there's sensible, doing. sober yes. perspective on this. Is that can we can we get that please and speak to John in Westport? Hello, John. How are you? How you doing, Kurt? Good, John. Nice, this, John. John. Want- John. Have you been drinking today? No, I'm at work. Uh, I, actually, I'm not drunk 24 seven. But hey, well, yeah, well, but, actually, but every time, but every time, but every time we talk to you, say you were drunk the day before, and you you say you weren't, then you admit the next day you were no, drunk. That's only on Thursdays. Right. Okay. Thursdays. Sorry. All right. Go okay. ahead. Uh, I actually want to defend you. I mean, as a journalist, as a sports journalist, Thank you, John. I mean, how are you not going to ask him these questions? That's what I, I am. Mean, I mean, if he doesn't want to answer, that's his prerogative. But. Hold on. Oh, what, yeah, this, hold on. This kind of ties in the Brady thing. Are you still willing to come into the studio and have Reamer slap you around or no? Yeah, why don't we do it this Thursday? Okay, you want to do it this Thursday? Let's line that up, okay? Sounds good. Go ahead, continue. No, I mean, I, I absolutely, like, I don't want to call anybody a baby, but but Brady needs to grow up. I mean, like you said, if you have a financial relationship with this guy, you're going to have to answer questions. It just goes with the territory. And if he doesn't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. That's your prerogative. But... You know, you as a sports journalist, you you have to ask these questions. I mean, what else are you going to do? Well said, John. It's nothing more boring than a very very John important question. Does Tom Brady get paid for this appearance? <clears throat> okay. So he has to put in the paperwork like everyone half, else. Half time, yeah, fifty dollars an hour. That's a good okay. question. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, let's take uh, yeah, let's take one. Uh, Joe and Ashby. Hello, Joe. Hi, Kirk. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, th- thank you. It's nice of you okay. to say. I was worried about you almost for two years, but I'm glad you're here. Thank Look, you. I think you screwed up this morning, okay, and uh, it was really after the fact where it kind of came uh, out because you indicated that you have a good relationship with Alex Guerrero, and you text back and forth. We do. Uh, if, that's the, if that's the case, you would have known if he was on the sideline. Oh, yeah, but, no, but, I, but, yeah, but I, I'm saying we don't text back and forth. Like I haven't texted him in, in probably a month. We don't text like every day. I'm saying we have – we not used to not have a great relationship. Now we have a pretty good relationship. But it's not the kind of thing we're texting like all the time. Well, you know, and getting on with that, I can understand when Rima blew it. Okay, I, I think you, you, when he you what? did the right. When Rima blew it way back. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. I yeah. think you did. I think you did the right thing. But it was kind of like you approached it like, "Well, I'm Tom. Tom, we're good friends, and all the rest of that." Okay, I think that in this in this case, I think you stepped over the line from the standpoint of it wanting to be more all about Kirk. 
Not really. No, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, not really. I kind of wanted to get, if he, I just wanted to see the, him, you know, was Guerrero on the sideline? Yes, no. Okay, let's move on. Let, let Drellick ask this question. Rob, I really didn't get the sense that, you know, that was going to happen at all. But clearly I was wrong. Right, we have a line open. 617-779-7937 is the number. Hang on, we'll get to you guys. we got one line open. 617-779-7937. We'll replay the interview if you guys haven't heard it yet. We'll replay it again. I think we may do it twice. It was pretty short, right? People may want to hear it. On a loop. That's true. Yeah, so we may do that. There's going to be a lot of reactions to that. You're welcome to weigh in. We'll talk about the Red Sox, I guess, at some point. We have these two guys here. A bunch of other stuff as well. Kirk and Callahan. Without Callahan, we have Drellick and Bradford in.